Nick, what's up, man? Thanks so much for waking up with us. Hey, how you guys doing? Uh, we're doing well. And, um, well, it was a painful weekend, right? Now, I, I, I know that you, uh, I, I think kind of by extension, you pay attention to LSU because obviously, right, the site covers like all things Louisiana football in a lot of ways. Uh, but 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 I know you don't have the emotional attachment, but I got to say, Nick, it, it was a very painful weekend watching Bo Nix into Daniel Jones uh, a race second half double digit leads and and, and beat you those games. It, it was brutal. Yeah, I mean, look, my, my, my Twitter mentions and everything. It, it's basically been a therapy session and people lashing out, and there's just a lot of <laughs> anger in the streets right now. But I mean, look, you get you get beat by Bo Nix and Daniel Jones. What what can you do? Those are two of the best quarterbacks walking <laughs> earth. So uh, you know, it just kind of is what it is. Yes. Uh, now, now you sound like me on Trubisky. I love it, dude. I'm here. Uh, <laughs> Okay, but okay. Let let let's obviously focus on on the Saints game. I have not had a chance yet to read uh, your film room breakdown that you do every. I read your kind of immediate reaction piece after the game. What has the film revealed about kind of what were the 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 key points that led to the loss? Well, I think the main thing is is just kind of going at one of the main talking points. You know, I'm kind of having trouble reconciling the idea, the widespread idea that that Peyton doesn't trust Jameis Winston. I think that is definitely reflected in the number of attempts. But when you go through and you watch the way they're attacking the field, there is nothing about their offensive play design that you could sit there and say, you know what, this guy does not trust his quarterback. You know, the idea that the offense needs to open up, like the plays are open. He's attacking all levels of the field. It, they aren't safe throws. I, I think the thing that's hindering this team is that they really don't have the safe throws because I don't think they have a receiver that can get open on a five-yard pattern over the middle. So it's kind of down the field or intermediate, and you don't have the shorter stuff, you know, the, the quick slant, the quick passing game. And, and I think that's the thing that's kind of hurting this offense right now. And I think when you get that, that's how you go from 23 attempts to 33 attempts because you got these short passes that are, you know, almost in a, in a sense an extension of the running game that simply don't exist right now. So, I mean, I think that's uh, issue one. Issue two, uh, you know, the defense just kind of fell apart a little bit. And part of that, I, I think there's some concerning things that, that came out a little bit about Paulson and Debo. Um, I, you know, there's going to be ups and downs, but, Against speedier guys, John Ross got his feet moving. Kadarius Tony got his feet moving. He got his hips turning. And there were just things he couldn't do to, to keep up. And I guess, you know, you kind of expect that from a guy that's six foot two, six foot three, going against, you know, speedier 4.240 guys. Um, but that was something that, that we hadn't quite seen before. And I think he does have good fluidity in, in his movements. But in a matchup like that, I think that's just something that he can't contend with. And then, um, you know, the other explosive play, Saquon Barkley, uh, you know, the Giants just kind of outcoached him there, honestly. There, there was a play in the third quarter. They ran the same exact play. It went to the other side of the field. They saw Marshawn Lattimore sitting on the out route, not treating Barkley seriously on the first one, come back and run it. He defends it the same way, and they beat him. So, I mean, there was just some little mishaps that happened throughout this game that, that were uncharacteristic of this defense that I'm sure they'll get cleaned up, but – you know, it, it was a, enough to unravel him. And then, you know, the, the last thing, you don't get pass rush, you, you're not going to win a lot of games. And, yeah. you know, when, when he could stand in the pocket 5.6 seconds on some plays, he had uh, four attempts over four and a half seconds. I mean, that's just – that's unsustainable. You, you you can't win a lot of games like that. Your corners aren't going to be able to cover for that long. And, and you know, that that's maybe one thing that, that has been a little bit um, of a trend. I mean, I, I don't think the pass rush has gotten – meaningful pressure consistently and it's kind of unbelievable that the defense is playing as well as it is without that that pressure on the quarterbacks and it is something that I think will change on Yamada comes back Davenport comes back Peyton Turner settles in more and you know I think some of those those issues will sort themselves out in time but um, right now it is it is a, a little bit of an issue and something that they're gonna have to overcome and then hopefully you get on the other side of the bye and, and that settles down but uh, you know I thought that was a significant factor in this game. Nick, on the offense side of the ball, do you feel like some weapons are starting to emerge to try to help the Saints? I mean, Callaway had a couple of big plays. Harris did. Montgomery got involved as well. We saw Alvin Kamara, although he didn't get targeted in the pass game, he had over 120 yards rushing, so they got the ground game going. It feels like some of the offensive weapons are starting to be factors here. It hasn't been enough, but it does seem like they're coming. Yeah, I, I would agree with the, the it's not been enough. I mean, you know, it's just – 
it, it's tough to win the way they're winning. It, it, and I think you just got to have those guys that can get open quickly. And, you know, I thought some of the emergence in this game what was more about the Giants. That they played a lot of zone coverage, and these are guys that, that really haven't gotten open against man yeah. a, a lot early in the season. And, you know, it, it was kind of frustrating to me to look at it because you, you see ways that they could attack the field, and I, I thought they eventually did. And when they started being more aggressive, that's when the game opened up and, you know, the offense started flowing. And then they, they pulled it back again in the fourth quarter and kind of tried to, to sit on that lead, and it backfired on them. Um, but I thought there were opportunities in this game for, for them to get open against that, that zone coverage and for Winston to air it out. I, I just don't think they did enough of it. Um, and this is something that, you know, it's easy to, to second-guess it in, in hindsight. You know, you can look at it and say, well, you blew an 11-point lead in the fourth quarter, so you should have put your foot on their neck. But when a team's running the ball up 11 in the fourth quarter, eight minutes left, I mean, that, that's something in the moment that, that's a hard criticism to make. Um, so, you know, it, it's just it, it was just a game where everything backfired on them. But, um, yeah, I mean, you are seeing some things from these guys. But, you know, the, the idea that Callaway was going to come in and kind of be a world beater, I think that that theory's busted a little bit. We're, we're kind of seeing that, that, you know, he's probably more of a uh, fringe to more solid number three type receiver. You know, Montgomery doing some things that is good, and he's he's showing at least some savvy that I don't yeah. think they have in a lot of their, their guys. You know, coming back to the ball, keeping himself friendly when, when you know, Winston's scrambling. That, that's stuff that, you know, you aren't really seeing from, you know, Callaway and some of the younger players. And, you know, Harris, man, it's just a shame he's not four inches taller because if he was, he'd be an absolute beast. I mean, he, he's the only guy that does get open quickly. And, you know, he runs good routes, and there, there's a technical ability there that I, I don't think the other guys have. But, you know, how many times can you, you throw to him? I mean, he's not someone you can send over the middle and, and you know, put him in danger to, to get hit. So you can be smart with him, you know, send him on out routes and stuff towards the sidelines down the field. And, and he looks like a killer on, on those plays. It's just when he's your best receiver, I still think that you have issues uh, throughout your, your receiver court. And that's not a – a commentary on him it's just I think you just need some other people ahead of him that that can be a little bit more varied in the way that they can uh attack the field talking to Nick Underhill New Orleans uh, football at Nick underscore Underhill and uh Nick this this idea right of, of of what would it take for Sean Payton to trust Jameis Wins right and how do you get to the point maybe you w- are willing to throw it 30 35 times a game. I mean, certainly I think the return of Mike Thomas would help. And and I wonder, is the return of Mike Thomas, does it represent an almost whole is greater than the sum of its parts return? Where, like, although getting him back, him individually coming back is, is, is going to be huge. But when you look at how it interacts with then Deontay Harris and Alvin Kamara, like, does his return mean even more than just what he brings to the table individually? Yeah, and, and on, the, on the distrust thing, like, I think the distrust is, is really more about the offense, the passing offense as a whole, than it is concentrated on, on one player. Again, you, you go back, you look at the way they're attacking the field. It's not like, it's not like he's oh, holding Winston. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's not yeah. like he's holding Winston back and being like, dink it. Like, if he didn't trust Jameis, I think he'd be running the 2020 offense where it's dink and duck, dink and dunk, rather quick pass out if it's not there get it to Alvin and, and off you go but like that that isn't what they're doing I just think that it, it's kind of they don't have the guys but yeah you get Mike back I think it makes everything better because now everybody's settling into the proper roles they're getting the right amount of attention you aren't having people kind of you know when, when it's Deontay Harris and Marquez Calloway you're keying in on Deontay Harris and Marquez Calloway when it's Mike Thomas and Traquan Smith you're keying in on them and now you get Calloway in a more advantageous matchup he can take advantage of that it puts Harris in, in positions where, you know, he can catch people by surprise with his speed because they're focusing on the other people. It helps open things up for Alvin to, to get involved in the passing game a little bit more. And, and, you know, you aren't seeing two people on him every snap, you know, a chip and then in the coverage. You know, so I think I think it just changes everything that, uh, you know, the, the way teams approach them. It, it, it should make them better. I mean, the thing for Mike is that he's going to have to come back and show that the ankle injury isn't a lingering an issue. You know, it's, it's one of those things that, that you, the doctors and people always bring up that it's a hard injury to come back from. You know, I, I think the way that, that Mike plays, though, I don't, I don't anticipate a significant effect because I don't think he's a guy that, that's kind of based on quick cuts or, you know, anything like that. I mean, he is to a degree, but he isn't, he isn't a, a speed type player. So I don't see a, a, a huge concern about him coming back. Um, but he is going to have to prove it. He's been out for a while. But I mean, 
any percentage of Mike coming back is going to be better than than what they have. And yeah. uh, you know, the the good news is uh, C.J. Johnson, wide receivers coach, did a interview um, with Bobby Abair, and, and he said that you know Mike looks like he's ready to come back. It's just kind of they're at the point now of just doing that that last little bit to make sure that he doesn't re-suffer injury. So um, it sounds like everything's heading in the right direction. Nick, what were your thoughts on the way they used Taysom Hill this last weekend? Right up until he threw the interception, uh-huh. I, you know, I kind of <laughs> thought that it was a, a perfect a perfect marriage. You know, the, the, they were bringing him in on those third downs, kind of getting them in mismatches. They started keen on the run. He's hitting pop passes. I, I thought it was a, a you know a great usage of it. You know, bringing him in to throw a bomb, I I, I just don't get it. Every deep pass that I, I've seen him throw, it's looked underthrown, even the ones that are completed. It and you know the play before you got Jameis, he hits that shot. Now you got to bring Taysom in to do it. I I just didn't I didn't like it. You know, it's and again it's one of those things that in hindsight it's it's much easier to to criticize. But you know, I just think overall, like I I don't I don't get bringing him to do. This. To do that when you have someone that can throw deep. When Brees couldn't throw deep, it made a little bit more sense because you had to bring in this element of the offense. And, you know, I get the idea that Taysom has to throw the ball to make everything else work so it doesn't become extremely condensed. But this wasn't a play like where the safeties were, were cheating up and there was this wide open guy streaking down the field. Like the coverage was there. So I, I, I didn't like it. I didn't like the decision. You know, I thought he had a guy underneath he could have thrown to. Um, so, I mean, outside of that, you know, I, I, I kind of agreed with what they were doing, but, you know, I, I just wouldn't be having him in those situations where, where he's throwing down the field like that. I just, I don't know. I, I thought it was an unnecessary risk at the time. Uh, so it's, you look, man, it's always weird to try to critique Sean Payton. I said this the other day, but like, he'll forget more football twice over than I'll ever know. I, I do firmly believe that, right? But did you get the feeling in all this t- guess game where there were times where Sean Payton was a little tilted? Um, I don't think that was one. I mean, that's just kind of maybe – certainly, though, a little upset about the previous play with the touchdown call back, but maybe that's just you're trying to be a little creative. But, like, the challenge certainly felt like somebody who was a little frustrated. Yeah, no, I, I think that's fair. And, I, you know, he said it himself, you know, the the, the uh, decision on the field goal. You know, he, he said he would have rather – rather punted that in hindsight. And look, I mean, you know, Rosas has never hit a 58-yard field goal in, in his career. I think 57 is long. So, I mean, that that's, uh, you know, a sensible regret there. Um, the challenge, like you said, you know, he said it was right in front of him and he was looking right at it. But, you know, what, what's, what was the benefit if that does get overturned? Yeah, exactly. uh, you know? So I, I thought that was a weird decision. Um, you know, but – I don't know. If I put myself there and I saw something, you know, specifically wrong, and maybe I'd throw the flag too. But, um, you know, I think in hindsight that there were a handful of things, and he admitted it yesterday. You know, he, he talked for 20 minutes about, you know, all the stuff that went wrong. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I think he has he has a lot of regrets, and that Taysom play was another one that, you know, he kind of said that there's there's plays in every game that that just kind of stick in his mind, and he wishes he would have done something different. So. I think as he went through it himself, you know, there there was a honesty that that you know there were some things that he definitely uh, didn't get right. Nick, what do y'all got coming up on the site this week? Uh, just everything going on with the team. Uh, story on Demario Davis, just about how he's changed his process of of learning and studying. That you know, it's kind of helped him get better as he goes on to his career. And then the breakdowns and previews and podcasts and just you know a- anything you want to know about the Saints and the things you don't even know you want to know about the Saints. We'll have those too. So uh, that's what we got. There you go. New Orleans football is the site. It is so worth the sign up y'all. And like I said, it supports the creators directly to, uh, to, to continue doing what they do. Nick, thank you so much, man. Yeah. Thanks for having me. New Orleans dot football. Um, was it from 56 or 58 with Rose Austin Sunday? Do you remember? It was 58. It was 58, yeah. right? That was a big boy. Would have been his career high. He had the distance. But, you know. What yeah, if you just had the kicker that was a little bit north of you. Uh, K-Jork. Who? Oh, K-Jork. K-Jork, yes. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, well, I don't think of – um. The, I think – you mean you're all right north. I don't think yeah. of uh, – I don't think of it as north always. So I think of it as west. I mean, I know it's taking north, but like I wouldn't, I wouldn't like think like you know what I'm saying. All right, never mind. northwest. Uh, it is northwest. <laughs> it, is, it is north. It is northwest. Yes, it is northwest. All right, when we there get we back go. here, uh, let's go ahead and uh, talk about Urban Meyer. 
Ouais, c'est 